Okay, so let's switch our focus now to cricket on the Sportsmax Zone. The Olympic Games took some attention away from the West Indies in their battle against South Africa, but the Caribbean side managed a draw in the first test, which ended on Sunday in Trinidad and Tobago. The Windies finished the final day on 201 for five, chasing 298 for victory when play was called off with six overs left on a rain-interrupted match. Dominican Alec Athenais struck a career best 92 to top score in the West Indies second innings, while Casey Carty and Jason Holder both scored 31. Spinner Kisha Maharaj finished with 4 for 88 to end with 8 wickets in the match for the Proteas. Earlier in the day, the South Africans declared on 173 for 3, batting a second time, starting the day on 30 without loss. Tristan Stubbs top scored with 68 against Jomel Warrikan's 2 for 57. Scores in the match, South Africa 357 and 173 for 3. West Indies 233 and 201 for five. Let's get the thoughts now of uh, Fazir Mohammed. Faz, I haven't spoken to you in a while. Um, welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. Always great to have you on the show. Your, your recap of what happened at the uh, Port of Spain's Queen's Park Oval over the past week. Yeah, I think we yeah. have a little difficulty with uh, Faz and his audio. The video is fine, but I think his, his, his audio froze. But. Um, uh, it was a game that was badly affected by rain, and I have to think that if the game went without rain interruptions at all, there could have been a result in this match. Well, there would have been a result. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that continue to bother me about the West Indies batting yeah. is the, the lack of match awareness. Um, even Athens, 92 not out, he had... The rest of the day to make eight runs, and he goes for another sweep. The man was at backward square. Everybody saw it coming. Yeah. He, um, Maharaj was bowling in that line to have him sweep again, yeah. and he fell for it. Yeah. Just play the ball straight, take singles, and get. Yeah, at the time I said there were what eight or nine overs left. Just yeah. play yeah. it out and make a hundred. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is where I'm sitting in my living room and I'm able to assess what's going on. But the people in the middle don't seem to be able mm. to do that. All right. I think we, we've got Faz back. Uh, Faz, do you agree with Leighton's assessment of uh, Athenais? Well, I didn't hear it clearly. First of all, let me apologize because we had some torrential showers midday today that caused a lot of disruption. So it might have affected the reliability of the, the, the Wi-Fi as well. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I, I didn't hear Leighton's comment clearly. So yeah. uh, no. Now, I was saying, I was saying it, seems, it seems always had to happen where our batters seem not to be aware of the match situation in the moment. Like, for example, I was talking about Athenae. The game was, is petering out to a draw. He could have used the opportunity to make 100. He's on 92. And he falls for a trap that was so obvious. I mean, I was sitting in my living room watching them put the man at backward square. And Maharaj bowling this particular line, getting him to sweep again, and then gradually easing that line into his off stump, where he eventually would sweep and swept right into the man's hands. I'm like, didn't he see that coming? I'm, I'm thinking that the match awareness, I, I'm not sure if I'm thinking about it the right way or they're not. But it always seems to me that they fall for the most obvious of traps. Mm. I, I hear you on that. Uh, one thing I would uh, add that... that Certainly, I, I felt influenced the shot that Athenese played when, when he got out. It was getting darker and darker. The umpires had brought out the light meters. So he was clearly mindful that play could have ended at any time. Fair enough. I, and, and therefore, um, I think he was very aware uh, that, look, you know, um, I've got the chance to get a test match 100 here, which he missed out on in Nottingham. This time around, I think he played with a lot more uh, awareness of the situation. It's just that that impatience and being mindful that play could have ended at any, any time because of the fading light. I think it's what prompted that shot. Fair enough. Mm. I, I, will, I will yield to that point because mm. I just thought that with the, the, I didn't consider the, the fact that the, the, the play could have been called off mm. because it was like, what, seven or eight overs left. I think eight, yeah. And he had eight runs to get. Eight singles could have done it. Or you know maybe get a four somewhere in, in it, but you know to, 
Go ahead, Lance, yeah. take over. Yeah. Are, are, <laughs> I just wanted to get a comment from you, though, because I haven't spoken to you in a while, and even the, the 11 that was picked, any, any, any surprises for you in the 11 that the West Indies went into this test match with? Not really, because I think what we are seeing, Lance, and by the way, can I just quickly uh, put in that uh, Mr. Selby Brown of CSDN asked me to pass on his commendations to you, Ricardo, and the entire Sports Max team for the coverage of the Olympics. Um, he, he said it was truly outstanding and it's something to be proud of as Caribbean people. And, and I, I'm happy to pass on those, those commendations to yeah. you. Well, tell, uh, tell Selby Brown thanks. His, his, his sister taught me biology at school in Jamaica. <laughs> Here in Jamaica. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. That was <laughs> it, was good. it was good because I was good at biology, so it is, it, that, it is commendable. That's, that's, that's great to hear. But, um, I, think, I think what we are seeing in the, in the situation of managing of players as well, because you get the sense that Jaden Seals could very well be rested for the next test match against in, in Guyana starting on Thursday. We have a situation where Alzari Joseph was not selected. We are told he wasn't dropped, that he was being arrested. So th these are considerations now that I think further water down the, the stature of Test Match Cricket Lands because you would think that it is the absolute pinnacle, but it really isn't anymore. And, and therefore, you see players being rested on a regular basis, uh, players uh, being, being given opportunities to play franchise cricket, when they should be playing for the West Indies or as will happen with other countries. So I wasn't really surprised with the selection, keeping in mind that there's almost a bit of a rotation policy in mm. place right now. Yeah. Your thoughts on Shamar Joseph and how he's being used at the moment? Because I suspect that in the Guyana Test match that there is a possibility or likelihood even more that he would play. Yeah. And I expect that he should play, that he, that he would play. but but. We, we, we have a situation now, Lance, where you need to have individuals like Shamar Joseph who haven't played a lot of cricket. Because again, it's well documented. You only bowled 15 overs of competitive cricket before that first test at Lords just about a month ago. And, and clearly that wasn't enough. We saw the cramps, we saw all sorts of different ailments and injuries, and him clearly being very short of work. The challenge is how do we get these players ready? For example, do you say don't sign an IPL contract unless they tell you you're going to play 75% of the matches? Nobody's going to do that. Don't sign a PSL contract unless you're going to be a first-choice player. Nobody's going to do that. So that is where the difficulty comes in because he wasn't the only one. Kyle Mayers and a few others were just sitting on the bench throughout the entire IPL. So this is where the difficulty comes in as to how do you allow these players to get enough work to ensure that they are optim at optimum level mm. come a test match. And, and this is the challenge that someone like a Shamar Joseph is facing. Yeah. You, well, you just touched on something administrative, Faz. News broke earlier today that Johnny Graves' tenure as Chief Executive Officer of Cricket West Indies will end his contract uh, when it expires in October. After seven years in the role, Graves in his farewell suggests that he believes it is time to move on. Yeah, and actually... Sorry, I, I didn't realize you were going to yeah, read, read. Go ahead. Read go ahead. He was just saying that I have put everything into this role and now is the right time for someone new with fresh energy to lead the organization and continue his, uh, this important work and build on the strong foundations that are now in place, he says. Yeah, and, and the strong foundations come from surpluses over the last three seasons because we've had India, we've had England, and again, that con concern about the model. Actually, when I had the first opportunity to speak to Johnny Graves in June of 2017, just months into the job, I gave him a year maximum because I felt that he would not be given the opportunity to do what a CEO or any other uh, uh, appointed professional person would be allowed to do. So he's proven me wrong by a long, long way because we are now in 2024, seven years mm -hmm. and a bit in, into his, his tenure. And now he's decided that it's time to go. So I think he will look on it with a measure of satisfaction as to the financial strength. But I think definitely a measure of regret in that he was unable to influence the changing of the international model, the global model of the game, which essentially focuses 
on those big three nations that we talk about all the time. Yeah. Art Faz, I guess we can continue this discussion um, some other time because we are, we are out of time now because I, I'm not 100 percent sure that he was ready to leave the job. Um, the grapevine does suggest that um, he, he may have wanted to continue, but it was a decision that his 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 contract would would not would not be renewed. Of course, that is that is an unofficial uh, position that I'm. I'm, I'm getting, and I'm, 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 I understand that sometimes when these things happen, the, the farewell comment is for the public and may not necessarily be coming from the person's heart. But let's see how that unfolds. But thanks, Paz. We look ahead to what happens in the Guyana Test match. Yeah, that's it for Faz. We'll be back with more on the Sports Match Zone to put the wrap on the show today with our interactive segment.